A new line of grocery stores looking to open their doors across the big country could mean new jobs headed this way. We'll hear what residents think is coming up next on Fox News First. An Anson police officer in trouble with the law will tell you what charges he's facing. As the temperatures rise, typically so do electricity bills, but there's a new app to help you keep tabs on your usage. Fox News First for your Wednesday evening starts right now. Live from the heart of the big country, this is Fox News First at 9. Some West Texas grocery stores recently left vacant by the world's largest retailer could soon be resurrected. Evening, everybody. I'm Bob Rikeen. And good evening. I'm Monica Quintero. The Tyler, Texas-based Brookshire Grocery Company has plans to launch new stores across Louisiana and West Texas. Uh, KXV's Chris Rogers visited with the folks in some of these big country locales. He joins us live with their impressions on a new venue and the possibility of more jobs. Chris? Bob, Monica, good evening. I'm here in Anson, Texas, right on this main drag right through town. If you can believe it, this abandoned building behind me was once a Walmart Express, one of many of its kind in this area that have since shut its doors. But if everything is, goes according to plan, a new line of grocery stores could be taking its place and bringing people back through these doors in the very near future. The Brookshire Grocery Company announced today that it planned on buying out these old Walmart locations and launching a new store called Spring Market. The plan would mean a new breath of life into these old buildings that have mostly stood untouched since their closing. Spring Market would open location in Winters, Haskell, Merkel, and here in Anson, just to name a few. There's plenty more on that list throughout West Texas. Now, along with the possibility of bringing jobs and money into these economies in these small towns, the stores would also offer an alternative to the one grocery store here in Anson, but some residents say they're just fine with how it is now. It probably would be convenient, you know, whenever, you know, Cash Savers is busy, but that would be the only time because I like going to Cash Savers and I like the employees there at Cash Savers. And to me, that that's our only store. But that's my opinion. <laughs> Bob Monica, and just talking to people in these towns today, it seems like there's kind of a mixed opinion on this store coming to town. On one hand, people are excited. It means new variety. It means new choices in terms of grocery shopping. But on the other hand, they're a little skeptical. They say these Walmart Expresses didn't work out. What's going to make these new ones work out? So we'll have to wait and see. Also, the city manager who I reached out to today said he's not quite ready to talk about it on camera quite yet until everything is in writing. So, Bob Monica, we're just going to have to see how this one plays out. Guys. All right, wait till the ink is on there. Failure to signal uh, cost one Abilene man more than a traffic ticket. Police stopped Gregory Best for failure to signal along Arnold Street. One stop, police found a short barrel shotgun near the driver's seat. Officers tell KXVA they searched Bet's vehicle and found some methamphetamine. Bet's house also was searched. Police found methamphetamine in a syringe. He's charged with possession of a prohibited weapon and possession of a controlled substance. An Anson police officer finds himself on the wrong side of the law. Breckenridge police tell KXVA 32-year-old Caleb Hodges was arrested on assault and family violence charges after his wife called police to report the alleged attack. Hodges was taken into custody at the Stevens County Jail and held on bond. A protective order was issued against him. Uh, after the heat, the afternoon, folks, uh, it, we do enjoy being outside in the cooler of the evening anyway. That's right, and the heat was on, Barrett, to say the least. How high did that mercury climb? Well, we actually reached 95 degrees for the high today in Abilene. You're probably wondering what's going on over here. Well, we do have a line of thunderstorm activity that developed from a weak storm system uh, just in southeastern, or yeah, southeastern New Mexico. That is working its way to the east. Now, this is pretty much just being fueled by the heating of the day. Once we lose that, that, that will uh, start to dissipate, but yeah, our extreme western counties will see a little bit of rainfall from this, but this will dissipate pretty quickly as we lose that daytime heating. Don't forget about the heat advisories are in effect for our eastern and northern counties is in effect through the day on Friday for up to 105 degree heat indices. Now we're going to take it back to you. Wow, it's going to be getting hot. Well, it's not even summertime and the big country is already experiencing some hot weather. As temperatures and humidity rise, so does the risk of heat-related illnesses. Heavy sweating without replacing lost fluids can lead to dehydration and heat cramps. There's also a risk of heat exhaustion and even a heat stroke. So whether you're an athlete, camper, or West Texan who makes a living in the heat, make sure to use caution. Working out here on the heat is very difficult. You get to sweat, <laughs> you change your skin color, <laughs> you, get, <laughs> you get a discoloration from the sun, you know, uh, dehydrated. 
stay hydrated. And here are some more tips to help you cope with the heat. Avoid strenuous activity during the warmest part of the day. Use a body system when working in extreme heat and take breaks on a regular basis. The city of Cisco working hard to fully restore water to its residents. It's been a problem since major flooding hit Cisco two weeks ago. The water system is being flushed today by opening fire hydrants around town. According to city officials, it is necessary to pull water into the system from the temporary water plant. This flushing is planned for the next several days. When the mercury climbs in our big country summers, the thermostat gets turned down, a time when our electric bill starts the seasonal climb. But there's an app out there to help you get a handle on energy use. It's the Tendril My Home app and allows users to see how much energy they've used. We're not uh, at home normally during the work day or especially when you're on vacation. So it's nice to be able to check in whenever you want and know exactly what's going on in your home and, and things that you can do to, to make it even better. Dresden tells KXVA she grew up in a family who always monitored energy consumption, but for those who don't, this app could certainly help. You could have a tidy sum of money set aside, not even know it. Now, we're not talking about Publishers Clearinghouse or a rich relative. The city of Abilene tells KXVA they have unclean property of $100 or less that folks haven't picked up yet. If you have a legal or beneficial interest in the reported property, you can visit the city website to see if your name's on the list. You can also call the city's accounting office or simply head to our KXVA Fox News First website to learn more. McMurray University standing with Orlando. A vigil was held on campus to remember the victims of that deadly terror attack on Saturday. The service of prayer was followed by candle lighting for each of the people who died. The university is hoping to promote peace and drive away hatred. The city of Sweetwater under new management. The city announced David Vela would take over the reins as a new city manager. Vela previously worked in a number of roles in Abilene City Hall, including interim city manager. He will become only the third Sweetwater city manager in the last three decades. Straight ahead on Fox News First, a little girl is lucky to be alive after a shark attack off Galveston Island. A nurse just happened to be nearby as the situation unfolded. It's an incredible story you'll want to hear when Fox News First continues. Also, we do have a couple high uh, pollen counts out there. The grass is in the high level, mold is as well, but the weed and tree doing just fine. I'll have the rest of the forecast coming up right after the break. Now with your first warning weather, here is Chief Meteorologist Barrett Phillips. Skycam looking to the west and you can see some of that cloud cover from those thunderstorms that I just uh, showed you all in the first weather. Currently temperature at 84 degrees, dew point 67 degrees. That's why it was quite muggy out there. In fact, earlier this afternoon we were in the lower 70s with that dew point. Relative humidity at 56 degrees. Southeast wind has lightened up at around uh, 8 to 10 miles per hour. This is the heat indices. You know, it's 9 o'clock in the evening, still right around 100 degrees for the feels like temperature in Throckmorton, Beckenridge, 87, not quite as bad in Abilene, also to the west and to the south, where we have some upper 80s to lower 90s for this evening. Now for tonight, like I said, that will fizzle away pretty quickly. Once we lose the heating, it may get as far east as about Roby to Sweetwater, but I'm not expecting it to get any further east than that. So partly cloudy conditions on average for the rest of us tonight. Tomorrow morning, waking up to some partly cloudy skies possible uh, along and south of I-20, mostly clear skies to the north of that, leaving for some mostly sunny conditions for tomorrow afternoon. No chance of precipitation for tomorrow. Mostly clear skies tomorrow night. And then on Friday, continue muggy and humid as well. Remember, those heat uh, advisories will still be in effect for northeastern five counties from Throckmorton County all the way down to Comanche County. During the day on Friday, you notice some mostly sunny skies and uh, also dry conditions once again. Mostly sunny skies, dry conditions tomorrow, 95 degrees to end out your day. 96 will be the high, 97, 99 on Saturday. Remember uh, during this uh, warm, humid couple days left. Uh, drink plenty of water and also you will want to take about a five minute break after every 30 minutes working outside. And when you do take that break, take that break in the shade. The body of a child snatched by an alligator at a Disney resort has been found. That boy has been identified as two year old Lane Graves of Elkhorn, Nebraska. Officials say the youngster was walking in ankle deep water at a Disney resort in Orlando last night when a gator grabbed him. 
Several gators have now been captured and euthanized. The hope is to find the one that killed the little boy. Searchers say the child's body was intact. It was found near where he was pulled in. Disney is closing all lakeside beaches as their investigation continues. Galveston Island records its first shark attack of the year. A young girl bitten Tuesday afternoon. Uh, the shark bit the little girl while she was in knee deep water with her dad. Fortunately, a nurse happened to be nearby with her family. She got creative to help the little girl with her injuries. Stephanie Whitfield from our sister station in Houston explains. This area along Pirates Beach in Galveston is where six-year-old Marin Melton was bitten by a shark Tuesday. They were just doing what we were doing. She was in her little pink inner tube and they were just swimming and hanging out and enjoying the beach. That's when Allie Curry says she heard the little girl scream. I'm an oncology hospice nurse, but I just, you know, saw the blood and I saw the panic and it just kind of instincts hit. And Her instincts were to tie a tourniquet. Her tools? an iPhone cord and a dog leash. That was, you know, our only action of plan here on the beach. You know, we don't have anything. So we took some water and cleaned it off and wrapped it with a clean towel and just prayed for the best. The six-year-old's dad, who works as a pastor in Kerrville, says they're at UTMB Hospital. He sent us a statement saying Marin is stable and maintains a gracious, positive attitude. Her vital signs are good. We are grateful to God for his sustaining grace, even in the midst of pain and suffering. She was bit probably about mid-calf. Paramedics say the tourniquet may have saved the girl's leg. It's going to be a long journey, but she She's the strong one. Relatives tell us Marin still has several surgeries ahead of her, so they're asking for as many prayers as they can get. A flower recall is causing a domino effect across some big names in the food biz. Kellogg is concerned some snack and cookie products might have undeclared peanut residue. The recall stems from a previous recall by Kellogg's flower supplier. That flower was used in brand names Mother's, Keebler, Kellogg, Special K, Murray, and Famous Amos Snacks and Cookies. For a full list of the affected products and their expiration dates, head to our MyFoxZone.com website. Home Depot is the latest retail giant to raise concerns about the security of payment cards with chip technology. The big box retailer filing a federal lawsuit accusing Visa and MasterCard of using security measures that are prone to fraud, putting it and other retailers at risk of hacking attacks by cyber thieves. Home Depot says the cards rolled out in the U.S. in recent years are less secure than cards used in Europe and elsewhere in the world. Last month, Walmart sued Visa over similar issues. If you're going through a difficult time, a PTSD extreme loss, there's something that can help. It's a new app meant to connect people and provide comfort. More on that next on Fox News First. You're watching KXVA Fox Abilene with Bob Rakeem, Monica Quintero, Chief Meteorologist Barrett Phillips, and Sports Director Manny Diaz. This is Fox News First at 9. We get so caught up talking mosquitoes and West Nile or Zika virus and tend to put on the back burner how the little blood suckers can affect our pets' health. Record spring rains mean there are more than enough mosquitoes to cover all of those concerns. The bugs can spread heartworms, a deadly parasite that affect both cats and dogs. Veterinarians say the best way to protect pets is with a monthly preventative. In the long run, it's also more affordable than treating an animal with heartworms. The oral medication um, is about $100. And as far as treatment, that can run anywhere from, you know, upwards to $1,000. Because mosquitoes follow us inside our homes, it's crucial to give indoor and outdoor pets preventatives. A North Texas man using technology to offer support to people with chronic illnesses. It's called Reach Out, and it's free. It launched in March, already has more than 2,000 users. Sonia Zod explains. I went looking for support. Sunil Modi is a tech guy, but when heart disease struck in his family, he had a lot of questions. Oftentimes when people are going through these diseases, they feel very uh, lonely, depressed. So he came up with Reach Out. It lets them connect with people who are going through the exact same thing as they are. People can vent, share fears, and ask questions of those who've been through similar experiences. People are going through diabetes, cancer, heart disease, mental illness, substance abuse, and even death and grieving. 
It doesn't offer professional medical advice, and you can't chat individually. Users create a profile and select topics that interest you. Share as little or as much as you like. It's where the lay people help the lay people. 54-year-old Connie Adams came across Reach Out while scrolling Google Play from her Carrollton home. From a car accident, I have PTSD and a traumatic brain injury. It's offering her a system of support she says didn't exist. I lost my family, I lost my friends, and people just don't understand when you look fine on the outside that the, the inside is what things are going on. Adams uses a pseudonym and picture of her dog to maintain some anonymity. So I don't feel that I'm really giving too much. Overall, she says the app has connected her with people who've comforted her, and in turn, she's empowered to do the same for others. You know, if I can help one person, then it's worth everything. That was Sonia Zauder reporting. Stay with us. Sports is coming up next. Now with your local sports, here's sports director Manny Diaz. Well, for football coaches across Texas, it's the chance to pick the brains of the best in college and high school football, the Angelo Coaches Clinic. Today was day two with a number of Big 12 and SEC coaches like TCU's Gary Patterson hitting the stage. The Frogs ball coach talked TCU philosophy this afternoon, but not before he shed some light on the Big 12's new championship game and what it means to his squad moving forward in year three of the college football playoff. I thought when we went to this whole committee thing is that they would pick the the four best teams without having to do championship games, without having to do playoffs, without having to do everything. For me, two years ago, it felt like that, you know, you're maybe one of the four best teams that you're playing. So the best way to control everything is to control yourself, and that's to not lose. And so TCU, that's what our goal's been, and we're going to keep striving to do is to be one of those teams and get where we need to get to. Well, in terms of Big 12 Conference expansion, Patterson added his theory is do what it takes to get into the college football playoff. Meanwhile, former Cooper assistant and Texas offensive coordinator Sterling Gilbert was among the key note speakers today. As a one-time high school and college quarterback, Gilbert knows a thing or two of what goes into choosing a solid guy under center. With it being his first year in Austin, well, he has a pretty tough decision to make in who will take the reins of the Horns offense next fall. You know, now Hurd will be back in the mix since he got banged up early on in spring ball. But all three of those guys have done a really good job, you know, with Hurd, Bruchelle, and Swoops. Uh, you know, so they all have three different things, you know, they kind of bring to the table, but, you know, it's still an open competition. Oh, by the way, Gilbert told me today he's all about his West Texas roots and from time to time enjoys tossing in a few things uh, into his Texas offense from his days here at Cooper in San Angelo Lakeview. So imagine that. All right, it appears the Art Browse era is on the brink of officially being over at Baylor. According to Chip Brown of Horns Digest, two sources close to the situation have set a push by a group of big money, big money donors to bring Art Browse back after a one-year suspension is dead and that talks of settlement between Browse and the university are underway. What do you do immediately after, right you, after win you win it, though? Win. Like you just spelled Oh, like I, th I threw up the ass. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is life after being crowned co-champion of the Scripps National Spelling Bee for 11-year-old Nihar Jenga, who threw up the Des Bryant X when he celebrated the win. His dad promised him a trip to AT&T Stadium, but today got something better, a chance to meet his inspiration. After I won, I really wanted to give credit to Des Bryant because he was like one of my number one, he's still my, he's, he's one of my number one inspirations and I wanted to give credit to him for teaching me not to give up. Oh, by the way, the word that gave him the co-championship was refreshissoir. I'm pretty sure I butchered that. Don't ask me how to spell that. All right, some young ballers made their way out to the north side for some hoops today. The Abilene Christian Schools uh, were holding their first basketball camp. Head coach Kevin Brooks and many former players are from around Abilene were on hand to teach the fundamentals. Kids ranging from second through sixth grade were able to work on their dribbling skills along with some conditioning. We incorporate a lot of conditioning, even with the young ones here in, the, in our first session. We get a lot of conditioning in. Kids aren't staying at home. They're able to get out and do something. Something key that we wanted to make sure that kids do something during the summertime. You know, most kids are staying at home doing, you know, video games, things like that, staying indoors. We want to get them out, out of their house and into a gym. Brooks also added he's uh, also doing a camp for 7th through 12th graders and says uh, he's emphasizing conditioning 
there as well. For a last look at weather, stick around after the break. Check this out. Lifestyle Perfumes has come up with new colognes for men, Bob. Hey, it is Father's Day this weekend. <laughs> There's the Jedi scent if you want to smell like Luke Skywalker or Empire if you want your scent from the dark side. <laughs> right now, these products are only available in Europe. Oh, what a shame. Darn. I'll give them $100 just to keep it over there in Europe. How about that, huh? We had a hot day today, and look at that color on Doppler, Barrett. Yeah, that's gonna push into our western counties. I do not expect it to get any further east than Roby Sweetwater to Robert Lee line just for our western sections. All right, that's our time for now, everybody. <laughs> we'll see you back here tomorrow. Sleep tight. Brown